that scene mm, at first i thought she was it was for real i didn't know she was acting mm -hmm. acting i was like is Marco going to get stabbed please somebody stab Marco already for me <laughs> everybody say jumoke is a loose girl jumoke is a loose girl but jumoke got the juice i just can't seem to cut and loose and no say jumoke you a loose girl jumoke you a loose guys welcome to our channel thank you for clicking that button um welcome to tm pepper soup this is jane and this is jules guys before we start our discussion today on malcolm and mary take out the time give this button a thumb uh, give this video a thumbs up as it helps with the youtube algorithm and do not forget to subscribe okay girl what did you think about malcolm and mary um, I just saw it this morning, actually. It was nice. Because you already told me it's not my kind of movie. Mm. I didn't go in with any expectations. Okay. You know, it was a movie of just, you know, one night in a couple's life. And I, I was able to... It's not going to be a kind of movie because it's like just two people. But I feel like those kind of movies are usually the hardest to make because they were they had to like cram a lot of hard words and long scenes and all that. So it was really refreshing. And to tell you the truth, you know that last through when she was saying you didn't thank me, thank you know thank you for bringing me coffee in the morning. That I was emotional. What she wanted. The whole fight was down to appreciate me. Yeah, it was emotional. But, I felt it. Yes, I felt that. That I felt that. But I have to say something about the movie. Going to the movie, I felt like the way they sold the movie. How do I put it? For the marketing part, the pair part, they kept saying is like uh, looking into a couple's relationship, their struggles, and blah blah blah. So I knew going into it, it was just going to be two people to for the entire film, and there's going to be a lot of emotional, a lot of uh, uh, dialogues going into the movie. So I felt like I was going to see regular fights and everything, but that thing was a bit dark. I don't know if you saw it from my own perspective. There was clearly a villain in the movie for me, and that was Malcolm. Like. The girl is a recovering addict from what you said in the movie. And uh, okay, fine, you stayed with her, but I don't know why would you hold that over her? Because when she was this scene in the bathtub was hard for me to watch. I felt it was like dozing her. If mm -hmm. like I feel like those are the kind of things that pushes an addict. You said it, it, like you told her that I, I can break you like a twig, and then you just went in and went in. Went in. I was like, what? Last, last for me, Marco and Marie was so toxic of a relationship. The movie should, the relationship should end rather. Like, if you're watching that kind of, I feel like as a human being, if you're watching Marco and Marie and it reflects your own relationship, and you got to walk away. You have to. Another thing that also <clears throat> came me was when it was Mary was kind of like a pushover. They fought, but she comes back and still listens to his ranting and his whatever and whatever, like the on the normal note before she goes back to the fact that oh we're fighting. I've not forgiven you. One thing that touched me was when she was like, why didn't you cast me? I mean, I thought about it when they came in and was talking about the movie and she was like, you wrote about my life. Your mind is not fucking based on you. It's an amalgamation of a whole different thing, a whole bunch of things. Who? People. What people? A lot of different people. Like my cousin, okay. Rick, for one. And she also made mentioning, or he also made mention of her being a, an actress or upcoming aspiring actress. I'm not like, okay, if you're writing a movie, even if it's not entirely about her life, and she's your girlfriend, and she's trying to come up in the industry, why didn't you cast her? 
So when mm-hmm. she said that part, why didn't you cast? Because I then shocked it up to the fact that probably she didn't want to work with him. I mean, the relationship is already toxic enough. Maybe the girl not just want to add work to whatever was going mm-hmm. on. But when she then actually mentioned it, why didn't you cast me? I was like, so that option was on the table, and you did it. Mm, I think it was just it was. I felt like um, the only reason Malcolm actually looked like a villain was because he was, you know, actually saying things to hurt her, as opposed to her actually stating facts. So he was clearly trying to say things, put things out there to, to you know, make her feel. He was so belittling so her. Malcolm was belittling the girl like. Ugh. I mean, yeah, that's a, mm-hmm. Malcolm, wasn't, yeah, right Malcolm, Malcolm wasn't totally wrong, but I felt the way Malcolm argued the really fight is one of those people that when they say something to you, like in a fight, you know, there are two kinds of people. There are people that when they say something to you, you actually listen to what the person is saying. I feel like Malcolm listens to reply. Do you understand? He's not hearing her. He just wants to give, he just wants to win the argument and be the one to say the most hurtful thing. Like, eh, my own IP in pass. Uh, yeah. And, you know, the relationship, you know, like I said, obviously it was like from a night in, you know, regular people's life. But I was able to kind of like draw out uh, or map out how their life is now. From my own understanding, it feels, it feels like it was a relationship where, okay, we see now that the guy is the one always, you know, doing the stuff. And, but she she was always, you know, letting everything slide. So it was something that they were never actually talking about things that hurt them in the past or how he made her feel at some certain points. They were not talking about it at all. They were just, she was just letting everything slide. You understand? So the guy then was of the impression that he was being a good guy, was being a good boyfriend or a perfect boyfriend or what she deserved because she had no complaints. You know, she she was smiling when she needed to. You know, she, she, you know, she was just, she was there for him, you know? So I felt like that's, that is, so everything kind of like struck in there for him, seeing that she had a, you know, she had some kind of complaint. But my own is that you really did not thank her. Yes, that's a big deal. The fact that he did not see it as a big deal was my problem. I the fact that he forgot to see, yeah. See, um, the fact that I didn't thank her at from when the movie first started, I was like, that's not a big deal. He didn't thank people forget to thank some people not their significant other by the way but mm-hmm. like people tend to forget to thank people let me just say i was at first i was like man girl this is not what you're really angry about there's something that you're angry about but that end scene when she says stating things i'm like it has been a cycle he doesn't appreciate her he doesn't thank her like she knows in their normal day life behaves like he doesn't appreciate her, he doesn't think of all those things, but for you to take it further in a public stage like that, and you still cannot say thank you when I know I was an inspiration for the movie. Even if he didn't have to say, oh, you were the inspiration, like he tried to tell me that you know. Acknowledge me that I am there and by your side. Just Mm -hmm. any form of acknowledgement. She said, every word, because she said it, she said, Oh, you hold on to me like life itself. And then he came and said, You want me to hold on to you like that? And then when she now starts stating at the end, like, Oh, these are the things that you were, the little things. Because that's who we've been for one another. That's who you've been for me and I've been for you from the day we met. From the day I overdosed in that market, from the day you drove me to rehab, from the first day I read your script about me about us, about our relationship, about how drugs were destroying my ability to love you and your ability to love me. All I wanted tonight was a thank you, Malcolm, that is it. He cried because he realized that 
I've actually been holding on to her like life. She has actually been my life support. You understand? So at the end of the day, it, it, when she took that last shot, it made it so obvious that I've been more to you than you have been to me. And all this while he was thinking that he has been more to her. I enjoyed the movie. I can't say, I, I would say that rather. I did enjoy okay. it. Well, you know what was kind of, Okay, continue. I felt like the guy kind of played it better than she did. I didn't really get... Um, like, I, the guy was more believable with his emotions and how he expressed it. 2,000 years later. That's how I looked at it. But then when I look at it from the acting side, let me see my own point. <laughs> okay, give it to me, give it to me. <laughs> I feel like it, he was, he acted the way he was supposed to act. In the relationship, it seems like the hyper one. See the way he went for that early times review, I was like, dude, take a breath. But, <laughs> But I feel that like Zendaya's acting was based on her character. She's the docile one in the relationship. Like when he starts, she's the one that talks calmly and him, he just goes like, oh, 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 oh. like for every one word she says, he has 10 to say. So I feel like she was playing to that character that in the relationship, I let him get away with it. He always wins. I'm the docile one. He, he has mm. to be heard. <laughs> and I feel that's why her acting was, you know, kind of on the calmer side. If it was like hot all through the world. But, but, not with mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I do see your point. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did finished that role. David watched him. He finished the role. He played that part. And I, funny enough, I watched the movie. When, when it comes to movie in those settings, I don't know what they call them in cinematography, but when there's just two people having most of the dialogue in the entire movie, it's quite boring. This one was very good. The, the dialogues were sharp, straight to the point. They hit you where they are supposed to hit. So it makes, even though it's just two people you're seeing on your screen, not so much going on, you are still hooked because you're like, girl, how are you going to come back? Did you just let him say that to you? Yes. Those kind of feelings yes. are going through you. So this, I home Mary, I felt like I was going to watch it and I was going to come here and just give one more review like they don't start taking Hollywood.com at their rubbish. But I mm -hmm. was pleasantly surprised by the script, by the acting, both actors, they did incredibly well. Now, the movie itself, what I was saying at the first part, like when they packaged the movie, I feel like the movie was darker than that. You have to see, like, Malcolm, Malcolm caught me deep because at the point I felt like I was, I was putting my shoes in, uh, myself in Zendaya's shoe. She's a recovering addict. You held that over her head that you were there when she was recovering. Nobody wants to hear that. Then you also talked about a suicide, which by the way, you also put in your movie. And the way it's not even that he talked about the suicide, it's the way he talked about it. Like he said something and then he just threw it out there like carry a pair of nail scissors and then go cut your wrist like he was just telling her in passing. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, like you really said that? Like, I don't know, like, you are right. She just lets him get away with everything. And that's it why does. she can't get the appreciation he deserves because it just looks at her like the one constant thing that is going to be there. Not like the way human beings take the air we breathe for granted. Like, it's just going to be there. We'll keep breathing as far as I'm alive. You understand? So she's just mm -hmm. like that. We don't wake up in the morning and tell God, oh, thank you for the air that I breathe most of the time. We don't see that that much of a miracle. Mm -hmm. Basically, that was what Marie was to mark on. Like, breathing. And I feel like the relationship would be different the next morning when he woke up and was looking for her. That's like a, a new relationship. If they can actually get past all of it, because I felt like they actually said everything they had to yeah, say. Yeah, he said everything. He laid down on the bed and then he said, I'm sorry. Let me be, let me be quick with you. That's the ending scene, because I felt it would end there with just, it would close there with just both of them being on bed. When they, it, it started the next morning and him being his needy self, still looking mm -hmm. for her, part of me was hoping that Marie is 
Right. That's what I thought too. I thought she left. Yeah. Because I felt like she's not those kind of person that will be strong enough to tell him to his face that I'm leaving you. He probably would convince her and she would stay. So she took the opportunity of, oh, now that he's asleep, he cannot convince me to stay. I'm leaving. So part of me was hoping Marie was gone. Yeah. Marie was I know. gone. I'm I I'm was like, too. <laughs> this relationship got survival because our relationship with the baby. Course. you know yeah, yeah, you yeah. Be right it just has to be a new dawn for them because basically throughout the movie i was like when are they going to break up that would have been the happy ending for me you know you know why they work you know why they both work you see yeah in this life believe it or not some people want to be needed some people survive on needing others some people survive on being needed it's what drives them movie is not far from the age in the in real life Yes, our age in the movie is not far from our age in the real life. My point being that before the movie came out, so many people were up on about like, oh, the age difference between them. Why would in real they, life? Yeah, in real life. Like, why would they cast them both as love interests for each other when they have such huge age difference of 12 years? Now, I don't know, like... I feel like the people who are making these complaints are those people that watch too many Disney or their children are watching Disney reruns of Zendaya's show. I want this woman is a grown woman. Like, yes. she is an adult. When I say adult, I don't mean she's 18. She's in her 20s. Like, people should give her a break. Let her start acting adults role. Sometimes I feel like Disney turns out to be a stigma for the people. That's what Disney does. That's what Disney does. If you're Disney, most of the Disney stars, they just, it's just like a lot of child stars that we know. Just like they will say Leo Bao or Lil Rome. Every time we see them, we're like, we see that child. So that's, that's what it does, really. I needed to take a break. Do you understand? And so that's how I watched it. I paid so much attention to everything. Now, the reason I cried when she gave her last speech or whatever wasn't the way she pulled it. I was just listening to the words. But the emotion, I got it from the guy. I got it from Malcolm. The emotions behind what she was saying. She didn't even put, like, that's why I say he was, he took it so far with the acting because the way, he, the way she said it was not as passionate as he took it. She didn't let her emotion. That's why it was hard for Malcolm to 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 take her seriously. Because you understand what I mean. If she, if you were that pain, which she was, did you see that time she brought out the knife? Ooh, she showed him. Uh, girl, we not we need to talk about that thing. Sorry, I just, we are like digressing from the point we are making with the other one. Mm -hmm. But that's fine. That <laughs> scene. Mm, at first, I thought she was. It was for real. I didn't know she was acting. Mm -hmm. like acting. I was like, it's not complete to get stabbed. Please, somebody stab Malcolm already for me. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that made me switch. I think that was the acting for me. When she was that was the best acting. acting from her. Mm -hmm. Now that's it. Malcolm, you, you should see, cast her. You see? The, and you, you remember what he said? Well, you could have done this at the audition because it's, it's a part of her that he has never seen, and she had it. But she was able to bring it up. Was going to get stabbed that time. Yes, I even thought <laughs> he was going to get stabbed. <laughs> I'm like, that's one big knife. Like you are going to. Big knife. You know? But she, she she was able to let that emotions for trying to act, but what she actually felt, the way she felt, she couldn't bring it up through her emotions, and that's the part that kind of fell a little short for me so yeah okay all right now let's talk on a scale of tea and pepper soup this is very weird because there's no way in this world that i will even give a dialogue movie between two people even juice because it's always that dry for me so mm -hmm. on a scale to tea of tea and pepper soup how is Malcolm and marriage yeah, pepper soup because they were able to keep my attention from the beginning to the end. Make this movie. Zendaya said she was doing her own hair and makeup. This movie is what award was. But something in me still feel like they will be snubbed. 
Like, even if you don't give Zendaya that accolade, David deserves that. All the efforts. Yes, they do. Like I said, if you notice, everything Malcolm was saying about his own movie is going to play out in real life in respect to this movie. So, yeah. Truly, this is this movie has all the makings of a snooze fest, and it wasn't a snooze fest. So, no, and we know, especially Oscars, those movies that get nominated are serious snooze fest. Most of them. <laughs> they sure oh, are. Ah, I feel so, like the people on the board are like old people that oh, you know. white people. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> freshen up that academic board. Like, bring some fresh blood. I in know. It. Anyways, guys, that's it for our video. Thank you for watching. If you click, if you're here, thank you. Thank you, Jane Anne. And this is Jules. Of thank course, you. give this video a thumbs up. It helps with the algorithm. Leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think about this movie. Let's not just end the discussion here. Just two people discussion. Let's continue the discussion mm -hmm. down below. And yes, Jane will be part of the discussion down in the comment section as well. Let us know what mm -hmm. you think. Do not forget to subscribe. Click your subscribe button, your notification bell, so you don't miss any more of our updates. And that's it. Bye. All I wanted tonight was thank you, Malcolm. That is it. That's all. Thank you, Marie. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for making my life better. Thank you for getting your life together. Thank you for watching 100 times and reading a hundred fucking drafts. Thank you for your notes, your experience, your patience, your authenticity you bring to this film. Thank you.